Let's get organized and inspired for the month of February. This month we're doing a hot air balloon themed Dutch door cover page. I'm getting ready for baby and so much more. Hey friends, welcome back. What's up? My name is Shada Campbell and today we are jumping into our February plan with me. So we're doing our February bullet journal setup. I can't believe it's already February. Usually January goes so slow for me, but this year is different, probably because we're expecting a baby. So now everything is like on super speed as we get ready um, to welcome a baby in the spring. Um, but anyways, it's a good thing. January didn't feel long. And one of my favorite things about the February setup is that January always kind of feels like an extension of the yearly setup that we do. And so February is like kind of the first month where you get to jump in and just start fresh and focus solely on that month. If you need a little help and inspiration with your yearly setup, it's never too late to start a bullet journal. I don't care what month it is. Go back and watch the 2021 yearly setup and we did a cover page and future log and a key and you know, some a goals page, all that good stuff is in that video. It's like 45 minutes long. So there's everything you need to know. And of course the January setup video is there for you as well. I'll link all that in the video description. Let's get started today with a little flip through of what I did for January and um, then we'll do our February cover page. Here's a little peek at my January journal. We did this butterfly theme, new beginnings, uh, Dutch door, of course, two page calendar. I did a brain dump, which I have yet to use. And then I chose one of my favorite weekly layouts. It's really structured, which I love, and I've been using it to my advantage. This is the week we're in now. I'm going to leave one more page for my spread next week. And then I've got my cover outlined here. For anyone that's wondering, I am working in an Archer and Olive journal. Um, it's a really beautiful notebook and I've been super happy with the quality of just generally everything about this notebook. Uh, previous years I was using journals from Baron Fig and I really loved them. So if that's what you're using, they have great paper quality and a beautiful hardcover just like this one. Things I like about the Archer and Olive are um, the pages are really thick. So they will stand up to wet mediums, which is pretty cool. And the pages are really bright white, which isn't something I had considered a lot before. For, but now that I have it, I really enjoy that and my marker colors are looking really nice. Um, one thing I quickly want to say is just that if you're starting out with journaling, you do not need a lot of supplies. You can pick up a journal at a bookstore or Winners always has usually good cheap ones. And then from there, all you need is a pencil and eraser and a couple good fine liners. And you'll see me through the video using my Pigma Microns. Those are from Sakura as well as um, Maloto black liners, which I'm really falling in love with. All the supplies are linked on the blog as well as in the video description. And from there, you might want a white gel pen. You could start building a small collection of markers or maybe pick up a few washi tapes, um, but it really comes down to just a journal and pen and pencil. So it's pretty good, low supply, low cost for a really fun and inspiring and very organizational hobby. Let's talk about how to sketch this cover page. So to begin, I just traced a circle and tracing that circle will help you kind of keep the form of the balloon um, nice and even and symmetrical and round, of course. And then I just did the flag going across the balloon and you wanna make sure those uh, lines are rounded or curving as well. Let's get rid of all of our pencil sketchy lines and then here's the fun part. We're going to fill the entirety of the hot air balloon with flags flowers. Of course, what else? Just like last uh, month's butterfly, we're getting our florals in there somehow. So all I'm doing is starting with a few larger floral forms. You see, I did a large daisy and I'm doing some roses and poppy type stuff. It's pretty loose. Um, and I'll repeat those a couple times as well. If you're having trouble with the daisy, make sure to draw a circle. Give yourself that guide. And uh, I'll link my floral drawing playlist 
below for anyone who needs help drawing flowers and berries and leaves and all that good stuff. I'm not gonna get too into it here because we're always drawing flowers on this channel. Uh, and then what you wanna do is just fill in the entire hot air balloon. It doesn't all have to be flowers. Leaf shapes tend to be a little less um, detailed, so putting some leaves in there is a good idea as well, so it doesn't get too, too detailed and too muddled. And once you're happy with it, you're gonna go over everything in pen. I am using the O4 uh, fine liner from Meloto, and I really like the way that line has a nice width to it, a nice thickness. And what I will say is on the edges of the balloon, you do want to go over them ever so slightly because if you stick to that line very religiously, it can look a little dead. You want the leaves peeking over the edge of the balloon so that it looks lively and botanical and organic. I'll take just a moment to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for curious learners on topics including illustration, photography, watercolor, video, and so much more. The classes include a combination of video lessons as well as a class project, and they have classes that fit your schedule and skill level. It's also more affordable than most learning platforms out there and annual membership is less than 10 bucks a month. And right now, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. With our floral illustration contour drawing done, we're gonna take that smaller fine liner, I'm using the 0.5 nib, and we're just gonna do a little bit of line shading. Now you may choose to leave it at that and just stick with the contour drawing. As you know, I love to add a little shading, and I just did a video all about my shading tips and tricks. It can be tricky learning to shade with pen, but it's really not difficult once you get the hang of it and you kind of you know, know the insider tips. <laughs> so definitely give that video a watch. At this point, I'm just going over the flag, sort of carefully going over my pencil lines. I wanna keep that as straight as I possibly can. And uh, the trick with the flag to make it look three-dimensional is when you're doing the little um, nubbins <laughs> that stick out from behind, just drop them down a little bit so they should be a little lower than the other part of the flag. And I'm going over the basket and the little strings. And to finish up, I'll write the month title right across the middle there. And of course, I just did it in pencil first. Also going over my clouds and sky, and I'm using the larger fine liner, the 04 nib, for the entirety of the contour drawing, including the moon and the stars. And it was the smaller nib just for the shading. We will um, get rid of all those pencil sketchy lines, clean that up, and then it's time to create our Dutch door. So slide a cutting mat underneath that page, grab a ruler and a paper knife, and what I like to do is just cut along the straight edge. You can see how that's come up, and then I carefully go along my um, not so straight parts, and that gets really boring, so I'm not showing that on camera, but that's what it looks like all done, and gosh, I'm happy with this cover page. Just a friendly reminder, you can print my cover page on Patreon. All the bonus content is available over there starting at two bucks a month. It's a great way to support the channel, so check it out. Next up, we're gonna create a little month at a glance to sit below the Dutch door. I am drawing another hot air balloon. So again, I just traced a smaller circle and that helps me create the form, uh, getting rid of all my pencil lines. And then I'm just carefully going over this. And for this one, I want to do some very festive sort of hot air balloon classic stripes. And we'll color this in, we'll add a little color, yes. <laughs> so I'm um, gonna, kind of figure out the color palette ahead of time. And that's one of my main tips on the channel. Don't just start coloring. Think about how all the colors are going to look together. Just take a second with some scrap paper. And of course you can find my marker colors on the blog. That's where they will be listed. I did a nice burgundy and pink stripe using a bit of that gray to just make the white really pop. And then I'm using those two shades of brown to create a little basket weave texture on the basket. 
finally I decided to pull my classic warm gray that's from Faber Castell and uh, just add a little bit of shading to those fluffy clouds. I'll grab one of my Pigma Microns and we're going to add a nice sketchy black line on top of our illustration. Uh, the O3 nib is really good because it's great for a contour drawing. Uh, it has that thickness, but it's still thin enough that you could add a little shading without really switching pens. So that's kind of my Goldilocks nib. Um, I'll add some stars in the sky. We're going to put the month title across the flag, just like we did with the uh, cover page. And our month at a glance is coming together. I did a few curving lines to help with the curved look of the balloon. And then we'll flip over and we just want to check our calendar placement because the calendar kind of works for both pages, both for the cover and the month at a glance below. So that looks cute. I think what I want to do is just put a little highlight across the days of the week, get rid of my pencil line. And yeah, that is all done. And I just love it. Flipping over, we're going to create our monthly calendar together. I've already done a layout, but it's super simple. So what I did is I just traced uh, one of my washi tapes to give me this large circle, and that's where I'll put the February title. Then I'm using my fine liner to just put a few stars and a little crescent moon, um, so it kind of ties in with the other pages that we've already completed. I'll also keep a similar color palette running through um, the entire monthly setup. And of course, I'm going over my grid calendar. It's really small, it's just two by three squares. Uh, so if you're using dot grid pages, um, that's the size. Let's put all the numbers in. And then I've done a, like a really quick sketch of some tiny little flowers uh, growing here below. And they're all sort of growing vertically. That's a really easy way to do a floral illustration is just to pick three or four flowers and leaves and have them all kind of reaching up towards the top of the page. For this one, I'm also introducing a darker purple color. Don't worry, all the colors will be listed on the blog. So head over there if you're curious about my color palette. And I am just uh, using those other um, same Tombow and Faber-Castell brush pens to finish off my little garden. And of course, I think I need to add a little sketchy black line. Why not? I won't add the black to, or the fine liner to all of the flowers. It might just get a little heavy handed, but at least for some of them, I think it looks nice. We'll put our month title in the circle. And I think to finish it off and tie everything together, I just need to add a few uh, leaves with fine liner as well so that it's kind of all works together. I know that calendar is really tiny this month. Um, I tend to just use mine to write in my video ideas and maybe the Patreon bonus content. So it's not where I'm putting like a lot of dates. I'll do that throughout my weekly layouts. If you like a larger calendar though, I think it's easy enough to kind of expand this design, take that calendar over a two page spread, and you can still do that kind of um, copper circle with the little flowers down below and just turn it into a two page calendar if that's um, what you need. I'm going to skip past a page here and next we'll work on our weekly layout together. I'm trying something totally new. What I've done is divided each page. This is a two page layout, obviously. <laughs> I've divided each into uh, four sections. They're nine squares each. If you're working in an Archer and Olive journal, we're gonna put the days of the week there. I always combine the weekend. And then for each day of the week, I'm just doing a fun little floral drawing or little floral icon, you could call it. It's just a great way Way to divide the space and create something pretty but it's also super simple. I think I've used all flowers that I actually included as part of my flower doodle ideas page and that was part of the yearly setup. So if you're looking for um, kind of just some advice or inspiration on floral drawing, check out the yearly setup because uh, I, for myself, I like to have a reference page. I know all I do is draw flowers, but sometimes when I'm journaling, I'll still be like, I can't think of a new flower to draw and it's always good to check the reference and be like, oh yeah, I haven't done lavender in a while or whatever. And if you're not comfortable with flowers, keep it simple. Like this one is so easy. It's just these little oval shaped leaves and some curving stems, but it comes together and it looks so pretty. But again, I'm gonna link the yearly setup and then I'm also gonna link a how to draw flowers playlist. So you'll have lots of advice from moi if you wanna check out some other videos. 
By dividing each page into four and offsetting my days of the week, I'm left with both sort of corners. Um, and at the bottom here, I'm just going to put a little notes area. I call this my double line print. All you do is go over each letter twice and it's a great way to hide your little mistakes. And then to create these lines, just pull that pen towards your body. This is a good way to create lines that are fairly straight and you don't have to use a ruler. This weekly layout has a pretty simple structure. I designed it, but I definitely think I've seen stuff like this on Pinterest and Instagram where you've kind of got a little icon or illustration that um, helps differentiate each day of the week. I wasn't, the one thing I struggled with was should I put lines in between all of the uh, days? I just love minimal spreads where there aren't as many boxes and lines, um, but they never seem to work out for me, or at least I don't find they look as pretty as the ones that I see on Pinterest. And um, I think maybe it's because my writing, I just have trouble keeping my writing really tiny and straight and perfect. I don't know, but you gotta know what works for you. That's all I'm saying. For me, having everything sort of lines and boxes and structure, that tends to be how my illustration style and just my writing style, that's how it kind of looks best. So kind of just know what works for you. You don't have to be good at every style of journaling. So let's finish this page up. I am just grabbing a little bit of craft paper and I'm gonna use a ruler to rip it kind of straight. I have these cute little calendar post-its. Those are from Washi Wednesday. And um, I'm just gonna, you know, put a little calendar, glue in that paper. I'm just kind of collaging, but keeping it super simple as I do. I have filled in the calendar. I used uh, my white gel pen to write in the week. And then I just want to bring those floral illustrations up to the top of the page to kind of finish everything off and give the spread a nice balance. I'm just doing a really simple little berries and leaves motif. And then, um, I thought I needed a little one kind of coming down from the top of the page here too. I just like the way it frames the calendar. This really was such a simple layout to create, so I hope you'll try it this month. So with that weekly spread all done, I'm just flipping back one page and we are going to do kind of a fun master list sort of spread that's gonna go across two pages here. My topic for my spread is going to be getting ready for baby. So it's all these different lists and they all fall under a single header. Now, for example, mine will be like um, knitting projects that I wanna complete. And then that whole list of projects, purchases that we still need to make before baby comes. And then that's a huge list. Um, furniture DIY that I'm in the middle of that I'm doing and that's a little list so it's I think you kind of get the point and if you're not having a baby obviously there's so many ways to make this into something fun that works for you bullet journaling is so malleable if you're not someone who needs to keep organized and scheduled this could be a journal all about inspiring you or it could just be a place to write down books you want to read or movies you want to watch there's so many things to catalog when it comes to journaling. If you want to follow along with this list spread, I think the new year is a great time to clean your house. I mean, I love cleaning and organizing, so that maybe is just me. Um, but you could do a decluttering master list spread in one. It might be cleaning out my closet. The list would be like, have I done my um, shirts, pants, shoes, etc. Then the other list, kitchen. Have I cleaned the fridge, pantry, drawers? Have I cleaned the uh, mud room? you know, blah, blah, blah. So you've got all these lists that fall under one header. Maybe yours has to do with finances or um, travel, or it could be anything, could be anything, but you can follow along with the form and the illustration, or maybe you are having a baby <laughs> this spring, and then this is definitely gonna work for you because there's a lot of organizing that comes along with that. So let's jump into it. Here's kind of the crux of what I've done. Not unlike the weekly layout, I've left the corners open, the bottom and top opposite corner. And then within the rest of the two page spread, I've done all these kind of rounded boxes and each box represents a different list. So that's all there is to it. I did leave myself one box here for probably an extension of the purchases list, let's be real. And then here comes the fun part. We are going to 
create a beautiful illustration that's kind of um, bordering and peeking out from behind all these boxes. I am using the same colors that I've used throughout the rest of my monthly setup and we're doing some more daisies. Uh, what you want to do is draw some that are kind of facing the viewer, some that are on an angle. I just do a little bit of dotting for the stamen and then using that really light warm gray from Faber-Castell. I am, um, you know, just basically sketching in the petals and I also add a little bit of line shading there and that's so important when you're drawing white flowers to capture that, that little bit of darkness that might be near the stamen, near the center of the flower or if you have overlapping petals, you can put a little bit of extra gray marker there. It just really makes those white flowers pop off the white page. And then I'm taking this sort of purpley mauvey gray and I am drawing a bunch of leaves. And what the leaves are going to do is also help those white flowers to really pop because I'm kind of butting them up against the flowers, tucking them in behind and just really adding lots and lots of leaves. I kind of have to apologize for this marker color. This marker I got at a local art store. Um, they do have a, a bit of an online presence in Canada that's De Sears for any Canadians. And um, yeah, <laughs> I know I was like, don't buy it because no one else will be able to find it. But I just loved it too much. It's the perfect kind of purple gray or really reddish gray. And I love it. It's so pretty. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have a comparable Tombow, but you know, always go to your local art stores. Most of them let you try the markers out. So that is looking good. Now we just want to really make our illustration sing with a little bit of uh, low lighting or just a little bit more contrast. So I'm using kind of a honey brown to add a bit more dotting on those stamens and I love the way that looks. And then we are going to add our title. Uh, as you can see, I left a space for the title. You could put your title anywhere on this page. You know, that's why we plan it out in pencil first. So think about where you're going to place those boxes, where do you want the title, where do you want the larger um, sections of the illustration. And uh, then my final thing was I actually just took another gray and added a little bit of line shading on some of the leaves. And yeah, I really like this. I think this is going to be quite helpful for me in the coming months. Okay, very last thing. I did have this blank page right beside my calendar. So I thought if I have time, I'm gonna go back and just add a little something something. I'm doing a bit more ripped paper. You guys know I like to sometimes crinkle it. It just adds that bit of extra texture and interest. We'll put a little washi tape there and then I'll just do a simple floral illustration. This is the kind of stuff I use throughout my journal to create a kind of a cohesive look throughout the year because I'll do it just whenever I need to, you know, cover a page or I've got a blank spot. And it's also a great way to like put a quote or a little bit of inspiration. And it also helps kind of create a cohesive color palette for your uh, journal. I'm gonna write dream, plan, do at the bottom. And yeah, it's simple, but a good way to fill in space. So that is it for my February setup. Let's do a quick flip back here and take a peek at what we've created this month. I really like the hot air balloon cover page. It just captures that kind of magic and uh, hope theme that I'm going for. And of course we have the corresponding page below. I did a simple calendar. We're doing our master list, our ready for baby spread, but you can change that up to suit your needs. And then we have a clean, simple, and of course floral weekly layout. If you would like to print my hot air balloon themed cover page, head over to Patreon. You can support the channel for just two bucks a month and get tons of bonus content, including an extra video every month. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today. I'll end today's video by highlighting a Skillshare course that I thought you might be interested in. It's called Start Drawing Techniques for Pencil Portraits by Gabrielle Brickley. And um, yeah, she seems like a really good teacher. She's going over all the correct ways to approach a pencil portrait and then really digging into some of that very delicate shading. And um, I took a look at the class projects and they're all quite wonderful. So definitely give that a try. Remember, for a thousand of my 
my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.